Welcome back to AgriTalk at World Pork Expo in Des Moines, where the rain has let up, but the thundering has not. It's still a rumbling around us. Well, a lot of talk uh, around here already about the, the, the new numbers out showing, of course, uh, the lower corn production estimates because of fewer acres with all the flooding and the, the problems there. Our next guest, Randy Spronk, is vice president for the National Pork Producers Council. Uh, you tell me you were on the phone already. Uh, the word is kind of buzzing around, right? We obviously, with a report like that this morning, uh, you know, everybody's watching what the numbers say, uh, the, trying to predict, uh, you know, what feed availability is going to be not only for this year, but for next year. And so, you know, the numbers, uh, again, show uh, uh, some uh, increased tightness in the carry out of the corn for the 2011, 2012. And uh, it doesn't take long to talk to a pork producer to get into the conversation about uh, how you're managing risk, uh, how you're sourcing supply and what concerns you have. Right. And, uh Corn prices are reacting as you would expect, jumping way up today, and uh, be about more about that in the days to come. All right, let's talk about some environmental issues and a, a lot of. We keep hearing about what's your carbon footprint. Certainly, the pork industry is looking at its carbon footprint. You know, it's it's been a long process. I think uh, uh, it was a process brought up about three years ago in the Environment Committee on the Pork Board side, and really it was you know coming from a producer standpoint. In other words, how can we help producers, and what kind of a tool can we get producers so that they can lower their energy use and thereby lower uh, their their operating costs. And it's and it's really interesting that you know starting out from strictly a producer standpoint, you know it's become something that's talked about in the broad society, uh, be it in the retailer and the consumer sector. So uh, we're very excited. Uh, it's a very complex uh, 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 process to do your carbon footprint, but yet uh, with the University of Arkansas and the National Pork Board's carbon footprint calculator, they've made it very simple. Uh, and so it's very exciting that producers then can, we can prove to society, you know, that they can entrust us with the resources, be it that corn, be it that soybean meal, uh, be it that electricity, uh, to take those resources and turn them into protein uh, that has a great taste and, and, and a lot of vitamins. And of course, you're constantly the industry dealing with the Clean Water, Clean Air Act and uh, the whether whatever regulations the EPA is pushing next, uh, I mean, that, that's a constant challenge for your industry. You know, uh, those two pieces of legislation are just con continually uh, receiving more scrutiny and more pressure. Obviously, on the Clean Water Act, it means the CAFO rule. Uh, the CAFO rule has been uh, uh, in progression uh, and had court cases over many years here now. We're very excited uh, with our recent win in, the, in New Orleans to say that if you don't discharge, you don't need to have a discharge permit. Now, you can't discharge, and, and, and we still need to be uh, conscientious of that, but uh, we don't need that extra regulatory burden uh, uh, of that permit if we don't need it. You know, it's a fine line. You don't want to sound like you don't care about the environment. Obviously, you do. You just are asking for regulations that you uh, that will acknowledge what you are doing to care for the environment and allow you to stay in business at the same time. You know, that's correct. And it's one thing if, if I actually do have a discharge. The thing that, that I become very concerned about would be a paper violation. In other words, you didn't file the right paper. I mean, you, you didn't denigrate water quality, you didn't have a discharge, but yet you're out of compliance. And so that's what we become very concerned, that it's inherent that a producer, just by his day-to-day -day operating practices, can stay in compliance and, and, and not uh, uh, be raising his hand to the EPA. But dealing with these environmental issues, that is an ongoing challenge, a huge issue for the pork industry. You know, it continues to be. Uh, uh, we, we keep continue to monitor the Chesapeake Bay, uh, what EPA is doing in the Chesapeake Bay with numeric standards. Uh, you've also had the NRDC uh, has filed a lawsuit uh, against EPA uh, on the Mississippi uh, River watershed, and we all know that's the Corn Belt. And so that's going to you know, not only affect livestock producers, but crop producers as well. And so we continue to be there. Uh, uh, we, we continue to need, need to have dialogue with EPA, and we need to understand uh, the direction that they're heading. All right, Randy, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Randy Spront, Vice President of the National Pork Producers Council. All right, we're going to take our break, come back, talk more about some of the issues facing the pork industry. And again, we are scheduled to hear later in the program from Secretary of Agriculture Tom Vilsack. Again, the White House announcing today the establishment of the first White House Rural Council to coordinate programs across government to try to encourage public-private partnerships to promote further economic prosperity and quality of life in rural communities. Secretary Vilsack will be chairing that new rural council. We'll talk more about it coming up. Stay with us. It's halftime on AgriTalk.